أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم everyone and welcome to ITV USA's Ramadan series Raising Our Children Right My name is Dr. Susie Ismail from Cornerstone and I'm happy to be with you on this journey in which we are exploring the stages of tarbiyah and particularly focusing in these first 10 days of Ramadan on the first stage of tarbiyah between age 0 to 7 In episode eight of today's of, of this series, we're going to focus on building on what we've learned in the previous episodes in terms of empathy, validation, understanding, and listening to our children as they look to us for their source of safety, security, and their understanding and their connection with the world around them. We also know that this is age in which they are beginning to better understand their position in the world in terms of their deen. We know that every child is born ala fitra, meaning they are born with the pure innocence of believing in la ilaha illallah. And it is up to us to guide them in really allowing them to have a better understanding, not just rote memorization of the Qur'an, not just rote memorization of Salah or the 99 names, but a better understanding of how these aspects of the deen tie into their day-to-day -day life so that they can consistently turn to the deen as they grow older so that faith becomes the pillar in their life that guides them through every difficulty, that guides them through every step of their journey rather than just something that they were forced to memorize when they were younger. So we've talked a lot about listening, empathy, validation. Now we want to take a look at this age of exploration because in those first years, age zero to seven, our children will explore. And how they explore often ties back to their learning style. We often look at, from an education perspective, the idea of VARC, the concept that every individual tends to lean a little bit more heavily towards a certain type of learning style. So a child may be more visual, where they process things more in terms of sight, and that's what they respond to. A child may be more oral or depend on hearing. So when they listen to something, when they hear something repeated to them, that's when they're able to better learn it. A child may be a better learner when it comes to reading, that as they grow, begin to develop a greater language skills, that reading words is what will stay with them. Our child may be more kinesthetic, meaning they learn from movement, from touch, from proxemics, from haptics, and that the way they interpret the world around them is much more movement related rather than related to visual, oral, or reading. So as your child begins to connect with the world around him or around her, he or she is going to explore. And they're going to explore in different ways. So we've all, as parents, had those moments in our children's lives where we know it's a hot stove and, you know, the child reaches out and maybe, you know, is about to touch it and we say, no, hot, right? And we move their hand. Some children will take that oral response of us saying, no, hot. Maybe they'll respond to it and they won't touch. Most children will, will still have that feeling of exploration, and they may want to touch it anyway. And so we will also see the responses there different. There may be the child that touches the hot stove, realizes the heat, pulls away, learns the lesson, and never goes next to it again. There may be the child that touches the hot stove, feels the heat, but then wants to keep pushing the envelope, wants, wants to keep trying, wants to see, well, what happens next? You know, how long can I keep my hand on the hot stove? And again, each child is going to respond differently. And this is why we often say, you know, that siblings are like flowers in a vase, right? When it's a bouquet of different flowers, each flower is beautiful in its own way. And they each come together in the family and, and you know, build upon one another. But they're each going to have different strengths and different difficulties, different challenges. Now, during this age of exploration, We often see it being the stage where our children start to enter school. Maybe they're in a daycare. Maybe they're in pre-K. Maybe they're in a uh, um, elementary school at this point. And as they enter into school, 
their way of learning will also be challenged. So if they are in a classroom that is very tactile, that focuses on, on touch, and they are kinesthetic learners, this may work really well for them. If they are in a classroom, though, that is very verbally oriented, where there is a teacher kind of spewing information, and they don't respond well to that, then they may not do as well in that classroom. And so the environment is definitely going to impact them. This is also the age in which a lot of times we will see children uh, being evaluated, evaluated for ADD, evaluated for ADHD, evaluated to see whether or not they're on the autism spectrum. And we're also seeing at this stage where children are becoming more and more exposed at younger and younger ages to technology. And the impact of the technology also has direct correlations to many of these neurodivergent responses that we are seeing. And I know it's something that's consistently being studied, but as a parent, you also want to be aware of what's out there. If the school is suggesting an evaluation of your child, understand why. Don't hesitate, don't refuse, definitely seek the evaluation, but also understand is the environment of your child best for their VARC perspective, for the way that they learn? Is the exploratory nature of your child being nurtured? Know your child, listen, understand, speak to the teachers so that you yourself can get a better sense of how to raise your child in the way that's right for your child. I hope you'll continue to join me every evening of Ramadan as we continue to journey together into gaining a better understanding of how to raise our children right. Jazakumullahu khair. Wassalamu alaikum.